Again, just the fact that you were able to isolate y by itself shows that it's a function because any x you plug in will give you its own personal y value. Every x has one y value. All right, so any questions on that one? All right. I'll leave that up for a few more seconds. Looks like everyone's done writing. Okay, so we're going to look at probably the easiest way to find out if it's a function or not is the vertical line test. And you use that when you have a graph. Okay, so basically that just says that if you draw a vertical line anywhere on that graph, and each vertical line you draw only crosses that graph once, then you know it's a function. If that vertical line crosses that graph more than once, then it's not a function. Okay, so if no vertical line can be drawn so that it intersects, the graph more than once, then the graph is a function. which is just another way to say if the vertical line crosses the graph more than once is not a function. Okay, so let's say, for example, if we draw the graph, let's say our x and our y-axis, if we draw the graph, y equals negative x. It will look kind of like that. Okay, but if we draw a vertical line, Anywhere on that graph, this vertical line only crosses once. This vertical line only crosses once. This one only crosses once. Each vertical line we draw, no matter where we put it, will only cross that graph one time. So you know it's a function. Each vertical line only crosses the graph once. Okay, so same thing if you had, let's say you wanted to draw the graph. You have your x-axis and you have your y-axis. And this is the graph y equals 5. 
which is really just a horizontal line that goes through five. If we draw our vertical lines, no matter where we draw one, this vertical line only crosses one time. Same with this one, same with this one. Each one of those vertical lines only crosses that graph once. So you know this is a function. All right, I'll leave that up for a few more seconds. So we saw earlier, or we proved earlier, that y equals x squared is a function. So if we looked at that as far as a graph, that's your x, that's your y, and y equals x squared, kind of, I'm about to mess it up right from the beginning. Okay, so y equals x squared kind of looks like that, give or take. So if we did the vertical line test on it, we draw a vertical line here, one there, one there. No matter where we draw a vertical line, this vertical line only crosses once. Same with this one, same with that one. All, any vertical line you draw will only cross that one time. So that's how we also know it's a function. But we also did x equals y squared. So we'll go ahead and draw a graph of that one. So you have x and you have your y. Now x equals y squared just kind of looks like the same graph, but it's sideways. Now, if you notice here, any vertical line you draw, this one vertical line crosses twice. So whenever you have one single line that can cross that graph more than once, it's not a function. Okay. So any questions on that one? So we saw before that when you have y, what well, we did for y equals 5, when you have a horizontal line, it's a function because you can just draw a line right through it and it only crosses once. What if you have let's say for your x and your y. So let's say you wanted to graph x equals 5. Oop, that should be actually a straighter line than that. Ah, that's good enough. That's supposed to be a straight line, but I cannot draw anything to save my life, so even my straight lines are messed up. There we go. Okay, so we'll say that's x equals 5, just a vertical line. The thing is, whenever you have a vertical line, if we drew a vertical line through there, it would cross at every single point. So if it crosses at every single point, it crosses more than once. So you know it's not a function.
since x equals any number, is a vertical line. And fails the vertical line test. Does that make sense? All right. Any questions on this one? All right. I'll leave that up for a few more seconds. done writing. So now we're going to look at function notation. Uh -oh. There we go. Okay. Now function notation really is just the same thing you've been doing all along. Literally the same thing you've been doing all along. It's just written a different way. Okay, so function notation will let y equals f of x. So this reads as f of x or function of x. Either way, you'll hear it both ways. Okay. So we know that y equals 7x plus 5. We know that y is a function of x. If you plug in an x value, it gives you a certain y value. Same way if you solve for x and put every, if you subtracted 5, divided both sides by 7, then x would be a function of y. If you plug in a y value, you get an x value. Okay, it's the exact same thing. You have f of x equals 7x plus 5. Still just a function of x. Okay, now if you wrote that as an ordered pair, So the ordered pair, uh -oh. x comma y becomes x comma f of x. Exact same thing, you're just replacing the y with f of x. So let's do a couple of examples. Let's say if we wanted to find the value of each function. Okay, so for problem A, let's say if f of x equals 3x minus 2. Okay, so we want to find f of 1 and f of 0. 
and b, let's say if g of x is equal to 7x squared minus 3x plus 1, if we wanted to find g of 1 and g of a. Now you can have any and every possible value. It could be f of x, g of x, r of x. It means absolutely nothing other than the fact that they felt like putting f, g, r, m, whichever one. They all have the exact same value. I mean the exact same meaning. Okay. So for a, f of x equals 3x minus 2. So to solve for f of 1, all you have to do is replace every x with 1. That's all it's telling you. So that's just going to be 3 times 1 minus 2. Okay, so 3 times 1 is 3. 3 minus 2 is 1. So we know that f of 1 is equal to 1. Normally, we just had y equals 3x minus 2. When x is equal to 1, then we solve it. Here, it's just telling you in that one step when x is equal to 1. So that's why it's the exact same thing, just written a little bit differently. Okay. So for b, uh oh, forgot to do f of zero. Knew that went by a little too quick. Okay. So f of zero. That's just replace x with zero. And that's just going to be 3 times 0 minus 2. 3 times 0 is 0. 0 minus 2 is just negative 2. So that means the 1 and 0 are the values of y. Yep, that would just be your value of y. So this, if you wrote it as an ordered pair, okay. would still just be 1, 1. one, one. Yep. So this as an ordered pair, since you know the f of 0 would be negative 2. Mm -hmm. Yep, just be 0, negative 2. Or, or, or negative 2 or 0? Nope, 0, because this, remember, this is your x value in here. So that's your x. And your y is equal to your f of x. So whenever you replace x, oh. that's your y value. Oh. Does that make okay. sense? No. Okay. Yep, so the same way you had x comma y, that's just now x comma f of x. Okay, so we do the same thing for b. g of x is equal to 7x squared minus 3x plus 1. Okay, so if we want to find g of 1, We just replace x with 1. <clears throat> okay, so that's going to be 7 times 1 squared minus 3 times 1 plus 1. Okay, which is 7 minus 3 plus 1. So that's going to give you 7 minus 3 is 4, plus 1 is 5. Okay, so we know that g of 1 is equal to 5. Or you get the ordered pair 1, 5. Okay, we do the same thing for g of 8. Okay, so just because they didn't give us a number doesn't mean we change up what it means. This just means replace every x with a. Okay, 
Okay, so g of a is going to equal 7 times, don't really need the parentheses there, times a squared minus 3 times a plus 1. And really, that's just your answer there. All right, does that make sense? All right. Right, leave that up for a few more seconds. Right, looks like everyone's done writing. Okay, so let's say, for example, for the function, say n of y is equal to 4 times the absolute value of 3y minus 8 minus 4. What if we want to find n of y plus n of 1? So we already know our n of y. So n of y is just 4 times the absolute value of 3y minus 8 minus 4. Okay, so we have our n of y. Now we have to find our n of 1. And n of 1 literally just means replace every y with 1. Okay, so sometimes it may be an x in there, but whatever's in that function, that's the variable you're going to replace. Okay, so that's going to equal 4 times the absolute value of 3 times 1 minus 8 minus 4. Okay, which is equal to 4 times the absolute value of 3 minus 8 minus 4. Okay. So that ends up being 4 times the absolute value. 3 minus 8 is negative 5 minus 4. Okay. So we know the absolute value of negative 5 is just 5. It's always going to be positive. That's 4 times 5 minus 4. So you have 20 minus 4, which is 16. Okay, so we know that n of 1 equals 16. So we have our n of 1, and we have our n of y. So now we just add them together. Okay, so our n of y plus n of 1, you can just make that 4 times the absolute value of 3y minus 8 minus 4 plus 16. <coughs> Bless you. You can combine those two. So that would give you 4 times the absolute value of 3y minus 8 plus 12. And that would be your answer since you can't really simplify it any more than that. All right. So any questions on that one? Okay. So sometimes they'll throw a little twist in the questions they ask. we wanted to, for the function, capital F of x equals 2 times the absolute value of 5x minus 1 plus 2. They want you to evaluate capital F of x plus 1.
Okay. So the rules do not change at all. It's the exact same thing. This just means you're going to replace every x with x plus 1. Replace x with x plus 1. Okay. So your f of x plus 1 is just equal to 2 times the absolute value of 5 times x plus 1 minus 1 plus 2. Once you replace it, then you just simplify it as much as you can. So here, we'll just go ahead and distribute that 5. So that's going to equal 2 times the absolute value. 5 times x is 5x. Five, 5 times 1 is 5. Minus 1 plus 2. Okay, so the only thing left to do, you can combine those two. So you have 2 times the absolute value of 5x. Five, 5 minus 1 is 4, plus 2. Okay, and that's about as simplified as you can make that one. All right, so whatever's in that function, that's where you're going to replace your variable with. The variable, variable could be an x, it could be a y. You may see an s or an r thrown in there. It's the exact same thing. They just happen to randomly pick a letter to represent it, other than X. All right, so any questions on that one? All right, so I'll go ahead and stop there. I'll give you a post-factoring test break. Won't be as much on this one. All right, if you have any questions, feel free to hang back and ask away. If not, I will see you on Tuesday. The exams should be corrected by next class period. You'll probably see them posted over the weekend. On, on campus? Yeah, on campus.